Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, used a pseudonym to hide his real identity. This is not only beneficial for his, hers or their privacy, it contributes to Bitcoin's decentralization overall and reduces the amount of potential attack vectors. In a series of talks, Balaji Srinivasan termed the phrase pseudonymous economy. He argues that most of us will eventually shift towards using our own pseudonym or even multiple pseudonyms just like Satoshi did back in the day. Let's find out why that makes sense and discuss the potential impacts that come with it. First of all, note that pseudonymity is not equal to anonymity. Anonymous names are disposable and changing all the time. A pseudonym, however, gives you a way to store reputation in that specific name, just like you can store wealth in a bank account or Bitcoin address. Whether the reputation is karma on Reddit or follow us on Twitter, pseudonyms are not new to us. Sometimes even nicknames of our friends are pseudonyms. Also, Bitcoin transactions are pseudonymous. Your separate work email, spam email and whatever else online accounts you have are likely pseudonyms. Square just recently funded a pseudonymous developer. Being anonymous on every code deployment would have removed the ability for him or her to gain reputation. So you may want to be a ghost, but even Casper has a name. Absolute anonymity is not realistic. Consider pseudonymity. From Satoshi to Banksy, pseudonyms have incredible advantages over legal names or state names on a societal level as well as on an individual level. Rather than make naive appeals to people to look past gender or race, or to not cancel or to not discriminate online, instead we make it impossible to do that by taking away that information entirely with realistic avatars and fully functional pseudonyms. This is more important than you might think. It's huge for enabling equal opportunities. Black, white, Asian, male or female, 13 years or 80 years old. None of it matters behind a pseudonym. Focus on actual output and talent becomes prevalent. Discrimination and biases continue to exist, so it helps to have a way investors, stakeholders and consumers can examine business ideas or models or products objectively. Nom de Plume, a secret history of pseudonyms, is a selective chronicle of pseudonymity over a hundred year period, beginning in the mid 19th century and ending in the mid 20th century. It wonderfully illustrates why there are multiple reasons for separating your legal name, earning name and speaking name. Names are loaded, full of pitfalls and possibilities and can prove obstacles to writing. A change of name, much like a change of scenery, provides a chance to start again. A name carries so much baggage, it can seem tired and dull. Too ethnic, too stultifying, too old, too young. In such instances, an author may be unable to proceed if he is, say, Samuel Clemens, but feels capable of achieving impressive feats if he is Mark Twain. Or to give you another example, the eccentric Reverend Charles Ludwig Dodgson, a shy, eminent Oxford mathematician and lecturer, had created the nom de plume as a means of shelter from which he could let his imagination run wild. Charles Dodgson is Lewis Carroll, the writer of Alice in Wonderland, which is the most widely translated and quoted book of all time, aside from Shakespeare and the Bible. And by the way, the origin and meaning of names is actually discussed in Alice in Wonderland. Must a name mean something? Alice asked doubtfully. Of course it must, Humpty Dumpty said with a short laugh. My name means the shape I am, and good handsome shape it is too. With a name like yours, you might be any shape. And that's the point. Your name can mean anything. Balaji describes it as a special form of decentralization in that a pseudonym is not given to you like a legal name, but chosen by you and only you. Assume an alias and the depth of the mind can be plumbed at last, without fear of retribution, mockery or worst of all, irrelevance. The erasure of a primary name can reveal what appears to be a truer, better, more authentic self. Or it can attain the opposite, by allowing a writer to take flight from a self that is true yet shameful or despised. With a pseudonym you can craft an alter ego, a new I. And decoupling ideas from people is immensely powerful in many ways. It raises the possibility of cancellation and fear from it, which makes the user of the pseudonym more free in their thoughts and creativity. Acting under a pseudonym has no or less of an impact on your social circle in case you get cancelled for your thoughts. As your social relationships are not obvious to the outside, they become protected. All in all, pseudonyms enable freedom after speech. In Russia, we have freedom of speech. But in America, you also have freedom after speech. Real names weren't built for the internet. They reveal too much and too little. This is a very interesting point. Crypto domain names like Balaji.eth on the other hand are names with a number of built-in features that make sense on the internet, while at the same time not revealing the person behind the name. They are usernames with a built-in domain, payment handle and login. Other obvious trends we see in the pseudonymous economy are tools for voice manipulation and AR avatars like Epic Games' MetaHuman Creator which is really impressive.
I think it's important to notice that pseudonymity is not one and zero, or black and white. There actually is a continuum. You can be less pseudonymous or more pseudonymous. The more you reveal, the less pseudonymous you become. I believe it would be much easier to find out who Satoshi is if he would have stayed active over the last 10 years. Through interaction, he automatically reveals information. Times of posts, use of language, or chances of a slip, something that wasn't meant to be shared, are rising. This is why we know that Stephen King is Richard Bachmann, Eric Blair is George Orwell, Charles Dodgson is Lewis Carroll, and Samuel Clemens is Mark Twain. However, we don't know who Satoshi is. Balaji explains that 33 bits of information are necessary to clearly identify a human being. So the amount of information you reveal about yourself reduces the missing bits to identify you. This is really important to understand in one specific context, transferring the reputation from one pseudonym to another. Say you want to start a new pseudonym. You would of course start at zero, no reputation, nothing bad, nothing good, no one knows what you did or do. Now it would be helpful if you could transfer some of the reputation from your popular pseudonym to a new one. Balaji proposes a few compelling mechanisms for this. The naive way to do this would be to copy all the followers from one pseudonym to the next pseudonym. One issue is that if you naively copied over that entire adjacency matrix to a new pseudonym, that pattern is replicated and anybody can tell if they analyze the graph matrix that the pseudonym is the same as this person. So just porting over the followers doesn't work in a naive way, basically because you're the only one who has this exact pattern of who follows you. A better approach would be using zero-knowledge constructions, which are used in privacy coins like Zcash to transfer some, but not all of the info. Here it becomes clear that pseudonymity is a continuum in which everyone has to decide the level of their privacy. Do you want to be one out of a thousand possible people or one out of 10 million possible people? You could transfer elements like the verification check mark or use other filtering functions. The more of your reputation you would transfer, the less pseudonymous you become. I hope I haven't lost you yet because I actually want to go one step further by thinking about a decentralized social media protocol. I'm pretty sure Balaji has thought about what is to follow but I haven't heard him express it yet. An open network is key. When we have decentralized social media operating on an open network, we can transfer the complete reputation and following to new platforms through the crypto domain names, for example. They store your reputation or karma online and can be transferred to other applications, which makes these names much more functional than legal names. Currently, it's the exact opposite. Say TikTok dies and something better comes up. You are not able to transfer your TikTok following to the new platform. You can only tell them to follow you on the new platform, but you'll automatically lose many of your followers in that conversion. That's one of the reasons why Bitcoin's open network is so powerful. You can't send money from PayPal to Venmo to Cash App to Alipay. But on Bitcoin, you can send money from Stripe to BottlePay to your own node to whatever third party service there will be. The interoperability is incredible because it's operating on one protocol. This interoperability would be huge for decentralized social media and the pseudonymous economy in general. Now I want to complete the video by talking a little bit about problems of pseudonyms and why I chose to not use a pseudonym but my real name instead. Well, one reason is that I simply knew less about the advantages of pseudonymity when I started the channel. Would I use a pseudonym if I would start again? I'm not sure, maybe. I definitely see it as much more likely than I did a year ago. There are primarily two reasons to not use a pseudonym in my opinion. First, I believe that people identify with real humans, with their faces, instead of AR avatars, brands or corporations. When you think of Tesla, you think of Elon Musk, the person, much more than the actual company. And secondly, using your real name incentivizes honesty through skin in the game. If you lie, you get exposed, so don't lie. If you lie with a pseudonym, you can change to a new one, albeit losing some or most of your reputation during the transition. With the real name, your honesty becomes part of the accumulated reputation. So using your real or legal name can have moral advantages. And that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, took something out of it, and will check out my thoughts on other trends like Bitcoin, digital nomadism and remote work, or the creator economy. I would appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for further content, and then I see you next time.